I'm also here as a candidate for president who is deeply concerned about the divisions that still hold our people apart and our nation back. I believe that our future peace and prosperity depends on whether we meet this moment with honesty and courage. So there we have Hillary Clinton a short time ago tackling the issue of the racial divide in America. It's a very uncomfortable conversation that we as a country have to deal with since the tragedies last week. The killing of two black men and five police officers. And Clinton also used that moment to take on Donald Trump. And I'm joined now by Congressman Jim Clyburn, Democrat from South Carolina. Sir, it's good to have you with me. And Hillary Clinton there referenced an interview that Trump did last night. And I want to play both of those sound bites, and we're going to talk about them on the other side. Take a look. Okay. There are still some black Americans who believe that the system is biased against them. What do you say to them? Well, I've been saying even against me, the system is rigged. They're not necessarily wrong. I mean, there are certain people where, unfortunately, that comes into play, and I'm not saying that. I, I can relate it really very much to myself. He said that he understands systemic bias against black people because, and I quote, even against me, the system is rigged, unquote. <laughs> Went on to say, I can relate to it very much myself. Even this, the killing of people, is somehow all about him. So, sir, do you think uh, that this is the right tone for Hillary Clinton to strike and also to attack Donald Trump on the fact that he feels that he understands because of what he's gone through? Uh, that he can understand a minority perspective because the system is rigged against him. He feels bullied. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me, Thomas. You know, Thomas, I grew up in South Carolina uh, during the 60s. I was a college student uh, participating in sit-ins uh, as a teenager. Now, I think it is high time for us to be grown-ups about this issue of race. We're not going to solve the race problem in this country by pretending it does not exist. We aren't going to solve the race problem in this country by pretending that you can change your skin color uh, as you change uh, a suit or a jacket, if you please. Mr. Trump needs to get serious about this issue, stop making light of it, uh, and I see that's what he seems to be doing. No system is rigged against him because of his skin color. That's what race is all about. And we must be serious about that, have a conversation with each other about that, and see what we can do to solve this problem, and not hide behind what may or may not have happened to you as a person uh, because of some ordinance uh, affecting your investments or how much taxes you pay uh, if at all. And, and sir, how do you, and, and talking about what you went through in the 60s and the different marches and demonstrations that you helped organize, because if I was doing my math correctly, it was over 60 years ago uh, that you lived when you were 12. Uh, so the commercials that, that have been played about 1968 and Nixon and the law and order candidate and Donald Trump now using that phrase, you know, being the law and order candidate, does that make you worried? how people will cast their vote, not based on hope for the future, but fear of the future. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. I've had that conversation this morning with members of my caucus. Uh, I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations later today. When I heard Mr. Trump uh, several days ago saying that I am the law and order candidate, that to me was more than a dog whistle. Uh, that to me was using the bullhorn uh, to send messages out to people. When I see an avowed white supremacist thanking Mr. Trump, saying in those thanks, we get your hints, we understand uh, what you're saying. This says to me that there's a lot going on in this campaign that we had better be conscious about because this country is too great a country for us to allow uh, it to be pulled under with the strong currents 
uh, of uh, what may be racial tensions. So I would say uh, to Mr. Trump, let's have uh, adult discussions about this very serious problem and not make it about any one of ourselves. And, sir, let me ask you about this, though, because our new NBC News Wall Street Journal uh, Marist polling shows that Hillary Clinton is basically tied with Donald Trump in really important key swing states, uh, leading in a third. Uh, we know that Donald Trump declined to attend the NAACP convention uh, coming up next week in Ohio. Uh, at this point, he's not spending the type of money that Hillary Clinton is spending. How do you think that a Democrat can take on the take the legacy from President Obama keeping the White House uh, when Donald Trump doesn't seem to be putting out as much effort as a Hillary Clinton and his payoff seems just as good? Well, uh, I think that what we have to get serious about once again is what kind of conversation we're going to have with each other as we think about the next four years uh, in the White House. Do we want to see this country move along? in such a way that all of God's children feel that they are part of the process? Do we want to have the opportunities uh, for education, uh, for employment, uh, for all the things that are the boundaries of this society available to everybody, irrespective of their skin color, their gender, their stations in life, their orientation, whatever it may be, do we want to have a country with liberty and justice for all? If we do, then it seems to me that we will be asking candidates to address the issues uh, that affect us as a country and not try to boil everything down to what may be your personal challenges, whether or not you will measure up to helping the country meet its national and international challenges. That is what we've got to do if you're going to be about the future. If you're going to keep talking about what may have happened in 68, 72, keep talking about these old dog whistles, uh, then it means that you don't want the country to go forward. You want to lurch backwards, and that's not what we ought to be uh, talking about in this election. Sir, real fast, before I let you go, uh, you know, you came out early as an endorser uh, in the primary season for Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders just got on board this week. Are you frustrated that he wasn't able to uh, basically put down any resentment about not being the nominee and Sure. try to unify his support behind Hillary Clinton and not have to wait 37 days. Well, Thomas, let me tell you something. I know what it is to lose. Uh, I lost three times uh, before I got elected to Congress back in 1992. It's tough to get over uh, losing an election, especially when you put everything you've got into it. So I can understand what uh, Mr. Sanders was going through. Uh, no, I'm not frustrated about that at all. I will get frustrated going forward, however, if he doesn't put his whole heart and soul into helping us turn out that vote that was so loyal to him uh, in the primaries uh, so that we can win this election in November. Right now, I'm not frustrated at all, and I hope I don't get that way. Congressman Jim Clyburn, always nice to have you on, sir. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.